multi leak base here. It's been in here for about, oh, ooh. This is not ergonomic. This is way too high for me. We have Dessert Person by Claire Saffitz. I'll be making something not sweet. I'll be making something savory. It is a two-in-one recipe. The ever so beautiful crispy mushroom galette with flaky olive oil dough. Here we have the matrix, not you Keanu Reeves. Both the flaky olive oil dough and the crispy mushroom galette are on a level two scale of difficulty and they take about two hours each. That's right guys, I said each. And there are no special tools needed. That's what I like to hear. Some noteworthy mentions about this recipe. There's no butter, no eggs, no dairy. This recipe is unintentionally vegan. Don't you love it when that happens? The base of the galette is melty leeks, rosemary mushrooms, and garlicky breadcrumbs. My favorite. Sounds delish. Six as a snack, four as a main course. Claire girl, I'm eating the whole thing. This recipe is gonna take me quite a while, so let's get started on the flaky olive oil dough. Oh, hey there, I'm still here. What I have here is a cup and three quarters of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar and one teaspoon of salt, one fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda, quarter of a cup of cold tap water, seven tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I have six tablespoons here. And then I have one tablespoon here in a dish for brushing. For your tools, you're also gonna need a rolling pin. And lastly, a brush. Here I have all of my dry ingredients combined. I'll be making a well in the center here and that's where my olive oil will go. That's six tablespoons. Taking my fork around from the edges, mixing it until it creates shaky pieces. I've used a fork to incorporate the olive oil into this dry mixture roughly. What I'm doing is using my hand here to ensure that the big pieces are no larger than a pea. Here's what it's looking like so far. You're gonna take your quarter cup of cold tap water, mix it in with the fork. I'm gonna take the combined portion and place it on my work surface. The rest of the shaggy pieces left behind in the bowl, we're gonna work in one teaspoon of cold tap water until it's well combined. I don't know what's happening here. You're gonna have to knead the dough a few times until it is smooth. Here's what my dough is looking like so far. I've kneaded it until it's nice and smooth. What I'm gonna do now is roll it out into a half inch thick square, wrap it, and let it chill in the fridge for one hour. I'm gonna chill too, this is too much work. I'm sweating right now. Chill for one hour. Get your parchment paper out. You're gonna need two giant sheets to roll the dough between. Here's my dough from the fridge. We're gonna sandwich this dough between two sheets of parchment paper and we're gonna roll it out into a giant square that's about one eighth of an inch thick. Oh my God, it's sliding everywhere. This was sliding everywhere, so I decided to use a tea towel to help me keep this in place. Oh, so much easier. Keep repositioning your parchment paper to ensure your dough is wrinkle free. Okay, this is not a square. Take your one tablespoon of olive oil and your brush and brush it over the surface. This step is to ensure flakiness. Looking shiny like my nighttime skincare routine. Next step, on the side closest to you, we're gonna be making this into a loose roll. Ta-da! Use the heel of your hand and flatten it across the entire length. Okay, dough is not my forte. Okay, this step is crucial to ensure flakiness in your dough. We're gonna be folding it into thirds and you're gonna do that by tucking the two ends inwards. Like that. I don't have any more plastic wrap, so I'll be using a Ziploc bag instead. What I'll be doing is placing this dough in the bag, squeezing out any excess air and using the heel of my hand again to flatten and make a half inch disc. Let your dough chill in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, or if you're making this ahead of time, three days. Don't throw your parchment paper away. Let's reduce waste and save this for later. I'm all about being efficient. So while my flaky olive oil dough is in the fridge chilling for about 30 minutes, I'm gonna use this time to prepare all of my ingredients that I need for the crispy mushroom galette. Some AP flour for rolling, a tablespoon of grainy Dijon mustard, seven tablespoons of olive oil, Basic stuff like salt and pepper. You gotta season your food, guys. Two tablespoons of panko breadcrumbs. Two teaspoons of nutritional yeast. Two bunches of leeks. You're gonna need about a pound of mushrooms, which is 454 grams. Not the recreational kind. 
It's not that kind of video, guys. You can use shiitake, cremini, oyster, or maitake, but I chose to do three. Oyster, cremini, and my favorite mushroom, shiitake. <sighs> Two fresh sprigs of rosemary, one tablespoon chopped. Last but not least, my favorite, garlic. Eat five cloves in total, four of them peeled and smashed, and one finely grated. Oh, I almost forgot the tools. Yes, yes, yes. You're gonna need a pan. Don't throw away your parchment paper from the dough process before. Use it to line your baking pan. Okay, mm that's pretty much it. This recipe does take some time to make if you choose to do it all at once, so you can make two parts ahead of time. First things first, you can keep the leeks in the fridge for up to four days. And like I mentioned before, the flaky olive oil dough, you can keep it wrapped in the fridge for up to three days. Let's get prepping. JK, it's a portable gas stove. Hot pot life, bought a yellow one because it reminds me of Pikachu. So the white parts in my leeks are translucent right now. So it was on medium heat before. I'm gonna reduce it to about a low and let it sit here for another 15 to 20 minutes. You should stir it occasionally and check up on it. If it gets brown at the bottom and stuck, just add a splash of water. Here are my leeks that have been cooked down and they're nice and brown. It's been about 15 to 20 minutes on low heat. What I'm gonna do now is take this off, add my Dijon mustard and my salt and pepper, and then place it in a bowl and set it aside. So my fridge is malfunctioning and it started making this crazy noise from the back of it. It's not the ice maker. So I have to call somebody to fix it and I'm gonna have to stop this right here. Yesterday was kind of a disaster. Let's get started on the mushroom mix. Say you decided to make the leeks, the mushrooms, and the garlicky breadcrumbs all in the same day, just keep using the same pan. You don't have to use three pans. Um, just wipe it down with a piece of paper towel and then continue on. Minimal hand washing. Okay, got my mushrooms here and my rosemary. What we're gonna do is add some tablespoons of olive oil here. Then I'm gonna add half the mushroom mixture. One sprig of rosemary. Add in two pieces of your smashed garlic. Make sure that everything is coated in oil and let it sit like this for three minutes until the bottoms are brown. Do not add salt or pepper at this point. This looks like a lot of mushrooms right here. And that's why we cook it in two batches because we don't want to overflow our pan. And they're starting to brown at the bottom. So this means at this point, I can toss them around occasionally and this will be for another three to five minutes. And what you want is to draw out the rest of the moisture from your mushrooms until they are nice and tender. Why is everything giving out on me? Oh, you can't stop me, I got another can. We back in business, baby. Okay. See how much moisture has been drawn out of the mushrooms? I think they're ready to be taken off the heat. Salt makes mushrooms draw out moisture. Therefore, it will prevent it from browning if you season it at the beginning, and that's why we're gonna do it at the end here. What I'm gonna do is just season it now with salt and pepper, and then transfer it to another bowl. Just gonna clean this quickly. Transferred my cooked mushrooms over. Now it's time for the other batch. And transfer to the rest of our mushrooms. Wipe this pan down with some paper towel. Save it for later for my garlicky breadcrumbs. Here's my dill from yesterday. I kept it out on the deck when there was snow on it and now it's all melted so it's very wet. In hindsight, I'm pretty happy that I used a Ziploc bag because melted snow probably would have been extra moisture that I did not need in this dough. Got my rolling pin, flaky olive oil dough and flour to dust the surface that I'll be working on. I'm gonna roll this out to 12 inches in diameter. So during 
this step, if your flaky olive oil dough tends to spring back when you're rolling it out, just cover it with a towel and let it sit like that for 10 minutes and attempt again. Flaky olive oil dough has been rolled out and now I'll be transferring it to a prepared baking sheet lined with parchment paper. What am I doing? This is why I don't mess with doughs. There, I transferred it. I'm excited for this step in the recipe. It's time to assemble the galette. Remember my leek mixture from yesterday? It has been completely cooled down. If you don't make this ahead of time, just make sure it does cool down before you put this on your galette here. Make sure that when you're doing this, you leave an inch and a half border around. Take my fork and just flatten it out like this. Make sure you don't tear through the dough. Here's the galette so far with the leaky base. Time to take your mushrooms and assemble it on the galette. Make sure you toss the rosemary out. This is why you do it in a sprig. Mushrooms have been laid out on top of the leaky base. Time to fold in the edges. I'm gonna press firmly on the sides to lock in my pleats on the dough so it stays like this. I didn't think I'd make it this far. I'm so happy with it. I have my brush and some olive oil going to go over the edges with this. Add some more salt and pepper. My oven is preheated at 350 and now it's time for my crispy mushroom galette to go in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes. Now it is time to make our garlicky breadcrumbs. Using the same pan from before, I'm gonna put this on some medium heat. Add in about a tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna be adding our grated garlic clove here, our panko breadcrumbs, chopped rosemary, and nutritional yeast. Mix until fragrant, this will take about four minutes. My breadcrumb nutritional yeast rosemary garlic mixture is starting to get toasty. Make sure you keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Breadcrumbs are looking really toasty and yummy. They're a nice golden brown. I'm gonna take it off the heat and add salt and pepper. Transfer your seasoned and toasted breadcrumbs onto this plate here and let it cool. That's good. My mountain of breadcrumbs. Galette is in the oven. I made my garlicky breadcrumbs. I hand washed all my dishes and tidied up the kitchen. And now you just chill and wait and play Animal Crossing. Okay, my galette is ready. It's been in here for 55 minutes. This is what it looks like right now. It smells really good. Now that your galette is out of the oven, just let it cool, and then you can go ahead and top it with your garlicky breadcrumbs. My crispy mushroom galette has cooled and I've topped it with my garlicky breadcrumbs. I'm so proud of it. My kitchen smells fantastic. It smells like rosemary and garlic. This is what Claire's creation looks like. I hope it looks similar to mine. I would do a better job at folding the edges and also browning the crust a little bit more in the oven. It's time to eat. Oh, I'm gonna treat it like a pizza. This dough is definitely flaky. Woo! Ah. Okay, my camera won't focus on the slice in my hand, but from far away, you can see that the crust at the bottom is nice and even. It is super thin. The color looks like this. Oh my gosh, all the toppings are falling off. And if you look at the crust over there in the folds, you'll see that it's flaky. I'm so happy with it. Beautiful. Okay, first bite. Mmm. It's crunchy. It's so good. The pie dough. Mmm. This is definitely crispy, and I think I could kill this whole thing and not share it with anybody. The bottom has some nice color. The top here, you got the crispy breadcrumbs. Um, it tastes so garlicky and nice. The cooked down leeks at the bottom of the base adds a little bit of sweetness to it. The mushrooms are nice and seasoned. There's tons of umami that it delivers. The olive oil dough is delicious. I actually wouldn't even do the butter one. <sighs> I'm so proud of myself. I love that this recipe is unintentionally vegan. It makes no compromises when it comes to flavor. Health. Okay, ASMR time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat another piece. Do you want a piece? Yeah. Fire. Fire? Fire. Fire. It's so good. <laughs> 
Okay, dessert person, you did it again. If you have company coming over and you don't know what to make, I highly suggest this recipe. It will definitely impress your friends and family. 110%, I will make this recipe again. It makes a really good light lunch. This thing won't last 10 minutes in my house. I'm gonna inhale this thing. I hope you make this. It's a lengthy process, but it's well worth it. Thank you so much for watching, bye. Thank you.